300 days, yes, 300 plus days since we got an official update from Rockstar Games in regards to, well, Grand Theft Auto 6. It's been a while, obviously Rockstar Games, they're notorious for their droughts and we're experiencing it right now. And uh, the gaming community not taking it all that well. We have individuals going up to the Rockstar offices, looking into their windows, trying to get a peek at, uh, I guess, hoping that there's something Grand Theft Auto 6 related. Uh, this user saying, y'all need to, y'all need better blinds. And then he followed it up by saying, if anybody works at Rockstar is seeing this, I mean no harm. I was just cruising with a couple of friends at 3 a.m. And uh, yeah, many individuals saying that that's truly crazy behavior, but I guess that just shows the excitement behind this game. And this this individual ended up deleting this post, but it's already been spreading all over social media. But yeah, people desperately looking for anything Grand Theft Auto 6 news related right now. But it does feel like the only news that we're actually getting in regards to Rockstar Games isn't about Rockstar Games, but some of the former lead developers at the company, such as Dan Hauser. He recently hired up a bunch of ex-Ascendant uh, studio staff. They are working on some sort of sci-fi open world game. Dan Hauser's own new company. They've been hiring a lot of new developers and opening various studios so he has massive ambitions it appears at this new company and uh yeah he's no longer under the rockstar games banner he's doing his own thing and i guess he, he just wanted to be the lead role in all of this and then we have leslie benzies this individual was also another rockstar leader he was the rockstar north president up until 2016 until he was forced out there was a massive lawsuit tons of madness with that situation but he's been working on a game called everywhere it's kind of unclear exactly what this is but it's supposed to be some sort of platform in which you have games inside of it anyway one of the games within everywhere is called mind's eye and they recently announced that they uh teamed up with io interactive to be the publisher of the game we don't exactly know what's going on with the game but it does seem like very grand theft auto online-esque and leslie benzies rockstar north he's notorious for his work on the grand theft auto franchise so i guess it, it makes sense but in regards to actual announcements from rockstar games we have seen a couple red dead redemption on pc is finally a thing I, I'm actually shocked it took this long. I didn't think it was ever going to happen. It's been 13, 14 years, but it finally did. Red Dead Redemption coming to PC on October 29th. It is unfortunately still $50. This is Rockstar Games. They're going to charge the premium for all of their experiences, even a remaster of a game that came out 14 years ago, but it's just nice to see that PC players are finally going to be getting access to this so many years later after console players experience this legendary game. And we also have seen Rockstar Games bolstering up the security of their online experiences. We saw this recently with GTA Online. There was some controversy with its implementation, but they have been very active with going after hackers. They've been implementing uh, ban waves, so they are very serious about this online security and the reason why they've, they're becoming, you know, serious about this nine years later is because all of this work is going to be transferred over to Grand Theft Auto 6. In many ways, this is kind of like a beta phase for them. They just, they're trying to experiment it and trying to make sure that GTA 6 Online is the best it can be day one, and they're doing it with this. And I think we are going to be seeing a lot more of that in the coming weeks and months with GTA Online, some experimentation with things. Some of that is in regards to 5M. There was a recent, very interesting report coming from GTA Focal, another Rockstar website of sorts that covers the company, but they talked about the acquisition. There seemed to be a lot of chaos behind the scenes, but there was one part of this report that I found very interesting, and it was the fact that one of the former 5M developers noted that I learned later that Rockstar Games was working on a 5M killer. They were given zero sources, zero debug symbols, and zero information, so I'm not sure how they were expected to succeed. This was obviously before, you know, they acquired 5M. The project failed and supposedly died two years before we joined, before they were acquired by Rockstar for $20 million. They were supposed to be advising and judging our team and reporting back to Rockstar on what they were like. Obviously, they were not impressed. This led to the project being revived, and it has been revived. Rockstar Games is going to be going, it seems like, all in on user-generated content with GTA 6 Online. And I think that's going to be the big focus with that future installment, because they want this to be as big as, you know, Roblox and Fortnite. And say what you will about Rockstar Games and Grand Theft Auto 6, but that online is going to be the focus as soon as the game does release. I highly doubt we're going to be getting single-player story-driven, you know, content or DLCs. I really do think it's going to be all about GTA 
online for about a decade plus. They're going to try to duplicate that model that they had with GTA 5 with this new installment. But in regards to actual GTA 6 updates, earlier this year we did find out that the game was in its final development stretch, but the problem with that is final development stretch could mean another couple of years, and it was said that Rockstar was bringing developers back to the office for five days a week for security and productivity. And the security is a big thing. This company has been hit with so many leaks, so many hacks. The 2022 hack specifically in which that teenager, I think he's in jail now in the UK, but that specific thing has still been brought with new results, new findings to this day. Just shows you how massive a leak it was. But we have also seen that Take-Two Interactive just recently reaffirmed that fall 2025 is the release date plans for GTA 6. But any thing is, this can change. This can change in the months to follow. And I think former developers have uh, pretty much made that clear. We're going to talk about that in a second. But we also have seen new leaks emerging. This was one of the big ones that people were talking Talking about saying is this real is this fake or what's going on with this specifically and I'll play the clip but if you look very closely you can see this is supposed to be the Winwood part you see it within the first debut trailer of GTA 6 and many individuals were like actually maybe this is real but it became quite clear that this is likely just an unreal engine render and the reason why is because if you look very closely at some of the vehicles there's an Amazon logo right here on this vehicle and there's also some accurate accurate real world vehicles here so it's quite clearly this is not Grand Theft Auto 6 related but it just shows I, I don't know why this game is hit with so many fake leaks but I guess people are just looking for you know, their own 15 seconds or a quick laugh and say what you will we've seen the Rockstar Games community over the years go way way further with these fake leaks it's truly insane the time some people have for this but yeah GTA 6 leaks this is I guess some of the content that's been going around on YouTube uh, don't ask me why, but I've a uh, sneaking suspicion those aren't real GTA 6 leaks. And I can't show this, I think I'm gonna have to exit out because YouTube, but Jiggle Butt feature, and they show Lucio with a, I guess, a, a BBL. And then uh, GTA 6 leak, the sexiest physical feature. GTA won't come out in 2025, and then other, other tweets spank me. Jesus Christ. But yeah, people are desperate. They really are desperate for some new GTA 6 information. And I personally believe before the year ends, we're going to get trailer 2. I think we all expect it. And as this article accurately brings up, GTA 6 fans are currently losing their poor minds. And yeah, that kind of accurately sum summarizes a lot of the social media posts. And this is, would be another great example of it. The GTA 6 countdown account has like almost 200,000 followers. Probably some of the absolute worst commentary on this game with so much fake nonsense that this uh, specific account pushes but more specifically they went after the mistakes that Rockstar made in the first trailer and they got community noted almost every single aspect that they brought up missing wind physics on Lucia's hair that doesn't match the speed of the car we actually did have a Rockstar Games developer responding about this we'll talk about that in a second but yeah it's just crazy nitpicking and we really do need a trailer too at this point visible polygons on Lucia's arm and seat due to low resolution textures it's kind of hard to describe to these people that this game is it's still in development and uh this trailer does it's not meant for you to go looking at every single aspect of it obviously there's some really cool details i talked about it at launch but jesus this is nitpicking to an extent that crazy the barrels hit by the car have a duplicated appearance of damage missing necklace uh, shadow and the hair appears grainy pixelated clothes clipping through the character model and they go on and on with all these nitpicks and uh yeah the community notes eventually does pick up talking about this the water at the back of this shot is missing its reflections unlike the water at the front this is a common artifact of screen space reflection it is by no means a mistake Repeating window patterns, another community note, grass and shadows getting drawn into existence as the camera gets closer. And uh, yeah, this is one of the big Rockstar Games accounts spending a, a considerable amount of time on pointing out nitpicks that don't really make a lot of sense. And yeah, we did eventually see a Rockstar Games developer respond to this thread saying, breaking news, video game is actually a video game. Another Rockstar Games developer mocked an individual that was pretty much comparing art direction uh, versus graphics. And then this Rockstar Games developer saying, how to tell these people that these games both have art directions and graphics, which, yeah, it, like I said, some of the conversation online about GTA 6 and just gaming in general 
it makes my mind just want to explode. But for a more detailed assessment about Grand Theft Auto 6, we did see one of the former lead developers talking about expectations with this game. This was earlier in the summer, and I thought it was very interesting because of his analysis, which I, I feel like it's a little, again, very inaccurate about the current day Rockstar games. So pretty much, Former Rockstar developer Ob Vermej, who served as technical director on every GTA from 3 through to 4, stated that fans may need to lower their expectations when it comes to the sixth game, noting that he doesn't think it's going to be wildly different to GTA 5. And I actually disagree with that. I think it is going to be a massive evolution because it's important to remember Grand Theft Auto 5 was developed for last two generation ago's hardware for the Xbox 360 PS3 and they ran into a lot of technical constraints technical constraints that you could see it all over Grand Theft Auto 5 in terms of things that they wanted to do but they had to cut a lot of content and in the years since they've they've kind of obviously developed GTA 5 up but it took a long time and I think with GTA 6 a lot of the improvements and a lot of the stuff that you see in Red Dead Red Dead Redemption 2 specifically, you're going to see it with GTA 6, which I do think that is a massive evolution in my opinion. And it's been, it's going to been like six, seven, eight years since Red Dead 2, and we're going to see even more improvements across the board in terms of the technology and the realism that you see with the open world, which is something that I absolutely fell in love with with Red Dead Redemption 2, which is going to make exploring the uh, Leonida very fun in my opinion. Vermage did elaborate by saying that the massive technological jump between places PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 allowed for some major improvements, but the same gap doesn't exist between the PS4 and PS5. Despite these concerns, Vermage is still convinced GTA 6 will be the best game out there, and I agree, Rockstar Games has not uh, let me down, and I don't think they're going to do that again here. They know the stakes with GTA 6. This has to be, this has to equal up to the expectations of being the most highly anticipated game of all time, which is what this game is, and they understand it has to be near perfection. Anything less, they're going to experience tons of outrage and I'm sure some people are going to be disappointed no matter what the wait for this game will have been what 14 15 years that's insane and many individuals including myself just never got into GTA online so GTA 6 this is our first Grand Theft Auto game in a very very long time and a lot of people have images and pictures in their head of how this game is and what Rockstar Games actually delivers I'm sure some are gonna be disappointed by that obviously hell there's people to this day that really did not like Red Dead Redemption 2 even though though I consider it game of the generation because of how good it was. Now, Vermej was not done with his opinions about GTA 6. He actually gave some commentary about the possibility of this game being delayed, something that I've talked about as being a possibility for a while now. And also some other insiders, Kotaku, all kinds of other outlets have pretty much said that it's a possibility with how things develop and how much work is left. Vermej pointed to Rockstar's decision to delay GTA 4 from 2007 into 2008, a decision he said that was just made just four months before the original release date. GTA 4 originally had an October 2007 release date, but the delay was announced in August, just two months beforehand. According to Vermej, the decision to delay had been made just around June, and so applying that logic to GTA 6, a decision on whether to delay the game could be made around May 2025, around four months before its fall 2025 release window, if September 2025 is indeed the targeted release month. If that's true, then we won't know if the game is delayed or not for at least half a year. And the thing is, Rockstar Games is infamous for delays. GTA 4 is not the only example. Red Dead Redemption 2 notoriously had tons of delays. Red Dead Redemption 2 notoriously had tons of delays. And the big thing with Red Dead Redemption 2, for those who have been fans of this channel for the longest time, you would know during those days that they delayed Red Dead 2 right at the last minute. They gave news right at the last minute. And it was always about five or six months before the actual release. Because originally RDR 2 was supposed to be releasing in fall of 2017, but about six or so months before the supposed release, after lengthy silence from Rockstar was moved to the spring of 2018. Then we endured another long bit of silence until the game was again moved this time to fall of 2018 which obviously they ended up hitting so that's going to probably be a similar thing well I assume we're going to see trailer too soon it'll probably still have that 2025 fall uh, release date they'll probably start pre-orders and then we'll wait until the the summertime and if marketing doesn't go into full force that'll be an indication that well here comes a delay 
And again, it just wouldn't be surprising. We all know that the expectations with this game and Rockstar Games' is reputation of this, which is well documented and goes well over a decade. Vermege did say the decision to delay GTA 4 was made four months or so before the original release date any further, and it's hard to make the call. Rockstar is probably not in a position to determine whether they will hit 2025 until May-ish. Vermej added that Rockstar will be mindful of GTA 6's impact, as I was saying, and its potential to make billions of dollars for years to come, potentially even for over a decade. And so the studio won't rush the game out to hit a release date. They know they have to have a perfect launch. They need to have Metacritic stores of over 95. If it not, I mean, this game needs to sell over $100 million. Rockstar Games is so reliant on these behemoth releases, and if this is anything less than that, that's a total disaster for this company. GTA 6 will sell for 10 plus years, and there is no competition to worry about, Vermej said. They are not going to release the game until they are 100% happy with it, no matter what is said in the trailer. And I understand a lot of people bring up what investors, you know, the Rockstar and Take-Two, they have to care about investors. They're going to make sure this product is the best it can be. They'll they'll let investors be angry for a little bit, but they'll be happy with the returns, especially if, again, this game ends up selling maybe 200 million sales lifetime. It is all about long-term success for this game and the online component. Now, Vermej did continue. He said, it's time for a revolution where animation is more AA driven and physics driven than done by hand. He said, the leaks in regards to what's been going on with GTA 6 and everything are not as important as people think. It's just because there's millions of people waiting for any news and Rockstar doesn't give them any news. Vermej said in the interview that he can totally understand why game publishers like Rockstar remain silent, leading to up to a new game launch, despite fans desperate for any shred of new information. Whenever a big company says anything, whether it's Rockstar, EA, or Ubisoft, or whatever, it gets analyzed and often gets spun negatively. He said it turns into a negative thing from their point of view. Their best bet is just to be quiet. That's what they're doing. And let's be fair, companies like Electronic Arts and Ubisoft, they earn that negativity with the things that they show and the things that they say. Electronic Arts with Dragon Age, they had that horrendous debut trailer for the Veil Guard, and it was obviously people went, on, went after it. Ubisoft, we don't need to get into that. It's just been controversy after controversy with this company, and they've earned that negativity, in my opinion, with a lot of their very dumb decisions that they've made the last number of years. But Vermej says it's a shame that developers won't speak more freely and more often, adding it's just not their fault, it's also the fault of the public. Everybody's attacking the big companies all the time, so they're just better off being quiet. And again, I disagree with this perspective. A lot of this anger and frustration is very much earned, and the AAA games industry has taken advantage of consumers for so long, and I just hate this mentality from so many individuals, not necessarily developers or Vermej specifically here, but it's always like, think about this billion dollar corporation who's going to milk dry its fans so I just I hate this perspective but as PC Gamer says here, ironically, Vermej hasn't been quiet about GTA himself. He started a blog last year about his work on GTA 3 and 4, as well as Vice City and San Andreas, and promptly got an email from Rockstar about it. I genuinely didn't think anyone would mind me talking about 20-year-old games, but I was wrong. This is Rockstar Games. They've sent private investigators to people's houses for modding their games. They will go, they will go this far. Something about ruining the Rockstar mystique or something is, I guess, what the email they sent to him at the time saying. At the same time Vermej insisted it was his idea to take the blog down no pressure from Rockstar my own choice which uh, and I mean he basically indicated right here they gave him a nudge saying hey you need to do the right thing stop talking about this stuff and take it all down now Vermej did continue in regards to GTA 6 that first trailer he said he was blown away by a lot that was shown he says it's possible all those different inf animations aren't handmade Vermej says he's heard some rumors of GTA 6 using pretty new technology having to do with animation and AI and all that stuff which is very interesting i think it's time for a revolution where animation is maybe not hand animated anymore but it would be more ai driven and physics driven we also did some of that in gta 4 of course I think if anyone is going to make that step, it's going to be Rockstar. I mean, yes, they are the innovators on this level, and it would not surprise me in the slightest. And this is just one of those reasons why expectations are so high for this game. Because people know that Rockstar is going to push that bar and exceed it. They truly do lead this industry by example in so many different regards. 
So yeah, right now we are in the drought phase for GTA 6. A lot of the articles, a lot of the news coming about is just stuff from Take-Two Interactive, Strauss Zelnick, just investor stuff. Like, they defended the 12-year wait for GTA 6. That was earlier this year. And they pretty much just said, hey, we make all kinds of content for GTA Online. Look at Red Dead Redemption 2 and the Red Dead Online updates. That's an example. We've been hard at work, and that's going to continue. And that's a defense that I guess makes sense, but I nothing will compare to those early 2000s with these so many unique Rockstar experiences that came about. I will always miss that. And after GTA 6, that's going to be a question. What do they do? Are they going to continue making these behemoth releases? Or are we going to start to see maybe some more smaller games like a Bully 2, maybe a Max Payne 4, maybe experiment with some new IP? Maybe not, though. Maybe that's why Dan Hauser wanted to leave Rockstar Games. He wanted to do new things in this current iteration of Rockstar Games isn't allowed to or can't do it because everything has to be this billion trillion dollar product. You get what I'm saying. And yeah, one of the big questions in regards to GTA 6 right now is what's going on with the PC version? Rockstar Games is notorious for not really, you know, having these at launch. And the reason why is they're trying to double dip. They get those PC players to buy this game on console and then later they'll double dip and they'll buy it on PC when it releases a year or two later. And uh, Strauss earlier this year has just said, we'll make more announcements in due time. But look, monetization in Grand Theft Auto 6 is definitely one of my major concerns and my god, I can only imagine how far they're going to go with that GTA Plus subscription service, but hey, right now we are in the waiting phase. Hopefully in the next month or two we do get a massive update from Rockstar Games in regards to GTA 6. I imagine we're going to see Trailer 2. I imagine that'll be in November, December. It'll probably be a focus on Jason, the second protagonist of the game. Hopefully we do finally get an actual release date. Again, I imagine it's going to be in the fall of 2025. Pre-orders will probably begin. I will always voice caution with pre-ordering any game, but... Rockstar Games, they know that they're going to make tons and tons of money off of this game no matter what, and there's so many people just eagerly waiting that day. But anyway, what is your excitement level for Grand Theft Auto 6, the most highly anticipated game of all time? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you later.